Actually, we, we have three, three segments of DPDK integration in VPP. First one is in initialization. Uh, then we have the buffer management. And finally, we have device drivers. First of all, let's start with DPDK integration. So uh, as I already said yesterday, uh, VPP is actually the older product than, than DPDK. And uh, at some point, we decided to basically uh, start using the DPDK in, in VPP. And we need to adapt the, the some specifics which are DPDK related to, to VPP. And as you, you were able to see before, we actually already have the command line arguments in VPP and they're used for startup configuration. So the way how DPDK is addressing the, the startup config with their, their command line was not something we wanted to use because it will basically change the VPP behavior. <laughs> Also, we wanted to add some intelligence in the, in, in the DPDK initialization. So, uh, so basically, we come up with a schema where we are generating the DPDK command line, and then we are passing the generated command line to DPDK in it. So uh, what we are doing, basically, in initialization? Uh, we are trying to detect the CPU sockets and to allocate memory on each CPU socket, which, which is available in the system. Uh, we are trying to detect type of huge pages. So we, we, we support both uh, two meg and one gig pages. And we have some, some uh, algorithm how to, to do this. So it basically works in this way. If you if uh, we are trying to allocate less than one gig of memory per CPU socket, we will try to use two meg pages. If you are trying to, to allocate more than one gig of memory, then we will try to use one gig pages. And if one gig pages are not available, then we will fall back again to two meg. So default behavior is that we are allocating 512 per socket. And that means that we will, we will basically use two meg pages if you run VPP without, the, the, without any uh, uh, tuning on, on the number of, on the amount of memory per socket. <coughs> Another thing is that we notice that it's quite, uh, not, not practical uh, to have the, the, the shared mount point on the system where the huge pages are. The reason is that if you run some other DPDK application, and if that application is killed or crashed, or if VPP is crashed, if you have this uh, common mount point, slash, slash mount slash huge or slash dev huge or whatever, you basically have a lot of uh, junk in that directory and the pages are still allocated. Uh, and on the other side, if you start VPP and you go there and you erase everything, it can happen that you will erase something which is belonging to a different process. So basically, we change the behavior in the way that we are trying to mount our personal mount point in VPP. So we are basically mounting huge pages as a separate mount point. It's a slash dev, a slash run, slash VPP, slash huge pages. And to avoid situation that if VPP is killed or, or crashed, that uh, the, the files are still there, we are using the trick with the lazy unmounting, which basically means that we create the mount point, we do the DPDK initialization, so the DPDK do, does the, the, all the huge pages initialization, but immediately after the, the uh, EAL init, we are basically saying unmount the huge pages, but do it lazy. In other words, do it immediately after the, the, the last file handle is open on, the, on, the, on this mount point. So basically, every time when VPP goes, uh, is quit or killed or, or crashed, in that, in, in that case, the, the, the operating system will basically unmount the, the, this huge page uh, mount and it will remove all the files from there. So that is basically uh, the reason why we are doing the, this lazy unmounting on, on VPP. And uh, if you do the show version verbose, which I already showed before, you can actually see what is the generated command line which is passed to the, to the DPDK. So it's the last line. This output is a, a bit older. We have a few more things in this output now in the, in the latest code. So you can see actually here that we are specifying that huge dir is run VPP huge pages. We are also changing the prefix to VPP. We are setting what is the master L core. We are setting the number of channels, number of uh, PCUs. Here we have no PCI, but you saw before that we can 
this is changing based on the blacklisting and whitelisting of, of the on the on the devices and so on. So basically, this is about initialization. VPP is really trying to make it transparent for you as much as possible, and I really suggest that unless you are not going to do some large-scale testing where you need a huge amount of buffers, that you just leave that as it is by default. Another one is very important one is about uh, memory pools and buffers. So uh, by default, we are trying to allocate the the socket memory on 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 every on, on every CPU socket. We are doing detection of CPU sockets and the available uh, huge pages uh, by using the CFS on Linux. So basically, reading the CFS and seeing how many huge pages of pages and one gig pages is, are available on every single on every single uh, CPU socket. And then we are allocating the default. Default is currently 512 per socket. And it's enough to basically allocate 32k buffers. Uh, 32k buffers uh, on every socket, and uh, and when it comes to the to the buffers, actually uh, I already mentioned yesterday. So uh, VPP have his own own uh, buffer uh, metadata. It's called VLib buffer, and when we into integrate with DPTK, we had we basically had to integrate our own metadata with DPTK metadata, and we are doing this by using the private area in DPTK mbuffs. And if you want to really to see, to map uh, DPDK, to, to, to do something with DPDK metadata inside your code, you basically have two macros available. So it's uh, those two macros, which are basically RTM buff from VLib buffer and VLib buffer from RTM M buff. Those two macros are basically giving you the pointer to, to the VLib M buff or or <coughs> uh, to VLib buffer or to RTM M buff depending in which direction you want to go. And if you take a look, that macro it's basically just a casting to the, because they are, they are adjacent. So in the DPTK, the, the VLib buffer is actually immediately after the RTM buff. So in the code, we have this, those two macros to really, if you really have a need to, to do something with the DPTK M buff. And it's quite typical that in, in the standard graph nodes, we are basically just using VLib buffers because all the data is there. And if you want to see the allocation of the, of the buffers, if you do debug CLA command, uh, device CLA command show DPDK buffer, you will basically see what is the, the, the name of the mbuff pool. We have socket zero and socket one in this case. How many available, how many allocated, and what is the total number of AMBA available on this specific socket. Uh, in case that you don't have huge pages on one CPU socket, in that case, we, we will display warning. So we will not uh, stop initialization, but we will display warning saying there is no free uh, memory on CPU socket one. VVP will use uh, memory on the CPU socket zero, which basically can affect your performance if you are, because the, then the, you are using the QPI bus to access the, the buffers on the different socket. And then finally, integration of the, of the interfaces. This is what we already touched before. So this is the output of show hardware, which I showed you before. It basically shows that the, all the, the information we are getting from DPDK about the specific interface, including the, including the, stuff like uh, offload supported on the NIC and uh, uh, some different capabilities which are announced by the by the card RSS, hashing supported on the card, what is the CPU socket for the specific NIC and so on. And if you want to change the, the UAO driver used, then you have this command dpdk UAO driver to basically change the, the UAO driver used. This is basically about integration with DPTK. Uh, I don't want to go very deeply into this. I mean, if anybody is interested, I can go to the code and show, and show it, but it's a, it's a huge, huge uh, code, code which is doing, doing initialization and it's not hard to read. It's basically a sequential. So uh, if you want to take a look, it's basically vlib, vlib, uh, vnet, vnet devices, dpdk, init.c. Everything is in, in, in that file. 